Charlie Kirk is dealing with this very same issue that we talked about previously with Kerry Lake, where he has perpetuated lies about the election. He has made people doubt our election processes without evidence. And now he's realizing, oh gosh, it's causing people to not want to vote for the Republican Party because they think it'll all be stolen anyways. And they won't want to go out to vote in an election process that they were told was fraudulent. As we understand it, it's not. So look at this. He does the weirdest mental gymnastics to not admit that the reason why he's getting emails right now from people saying, I didn't go vote in Georgia because I think it's all going to be stolen anyways, is not his fault. He's figuring out a way to not feel like it's his fault and encourage people to vote without completely giving up on his claims, but sort of realizing where he was in the wrong. Take a look at this. See, it's interesting. I actually assumed incorrectly that if you take time to watch this program, thank you, that you would also just automatically vote. Turns out there's a fair portion of you that are completely done and that are willing to voice that opinion. Do we have that Laura Ingram clip that we guys pulled? And I just want to say I do sympathize with being upset with the Republican Party and not totally trusting the system, but not participating at all guarantees the other side to be able to play games. And if I'm going to let him continue because he disproves the lies that he's perpetuated for a super long time in just a second here. But right there, he says the most not logical statement I've heard in a long time. If we don't go out and vote, that guarantees the Democratic Party can play games. But the games that you're talking about are a level of election stealing that would be so advanced, so complex, so well coordinated that a few more thousand Republicans going out to vote in an election wouldn't make a difference. They could steal it anyways, the magical cabal of Democrats and whatever you want to say. And so this thing that they've been doing that is now not working, which is to say, if we lose, it's because it was stolen, but still go out to vote because if you vote hard enough and enough people go out to vote, then somehow they can't use the, ele uh, the election stealing stuff because we're just too powerful. And the reason why people like he him, he does it is because he knows it's not stolen, but that's good for his brand. Now it's getting less good now as you're about to see, but he wants to keep perpetuating the lies to benefit him, but then also wants the Republican Party to do well and knows our election processes are fine, so then pushes for people to vote. It's very strange, but take a look at how this continues. Everything was broken and lost. How did we win the House of Representatives? If everything is broken and lost, how did Ron Johnson, who stood up against the pharmaceutical company, win in Wisconsin? If everything was broken and lost, how did Ron DeSantis win by 17 votes? How did we win the House? That's a great question. Your Lord and Savior, Donald Trump, has been saying that it's all been stolen, everything's getting stolen, and he's never addressed the question that you're now asking, and the... Oh, he is a huge <laughs> Carrie Lake fan. Charlie Kirk is, and he does all these events with her, and he loves her. Turn around, Charlie. Get off air. Stop talking to your audience for a second, even though these are good questions for them to think about as well. Go call her up. Ask her these questions. Why is it that we are claiming as the right, so some of the right, the MAGA election deny right, that our elections are being stolen and they're so powerful and they can do anything they want to steal our elections. But also Ron DeSantis crush, all of these Republicans crush in different races and down ballot races yielded a result where the House of Representatives is going Republican. How does that work? Why wouldn't the Democrats just steal everything and be all in power? I, we, <laughs> what, we've been... Charlie, we've been asking you that as a left since you started lying about the election and you wouldn't answer the question. Sometimes conspiracy theorists would go, well, it's because they wanted to make it look like it wasn't completely stolen. So they <laughs> threw a little bit to uh, people to make it look more realistic. Yeah, okay. House by getting wins in California and New York. We won the house through Oregon, California, New York. I'm not, I, this, I was in the movie 2000 Mules. I sympathize with all of the sentiment. Thoughts, actually, are not as important. You can have very angry thoughts towards the system. It is actions that I will instead address. You could say, oh, this system is corrupt. It's terrible. I'm going to go vote. Fine. You've done the right thing. You have not allowed your thoughts to manifest 
into what I would consider to be an immoral action. Someone says, Charlie, I thought, I thought you were kidding when you said people weren't voting until you read these emails. No, you should see. I'm reading them on air. And by the way, I'm tweeting out some of these emails so you could see them yourself, ourselves. This is so dramatic and beautiful in a sense to see the deep humiliation that's occurring right now where he's now reprimanding his audience for believing the claims that he allowed. That's what's happening. He's saying, <laughs> you believed me so well that now you're taking a logical action. If you actually thought all of our elections were being stolen, I wouldn't go vote. Of course not. They're all being stolen. Why would I want to vote? I'm not going to do anything to affect it because the magical machines can just be flipped with the powerful uh, people from, I don't even know the conspiracy, <laughs> but China or something. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so that's a logical act if you can convince someone that the elections are stolen, which you're doing, and I guess you're backing off of now, but you're also supporting all the candidates that are the most election denier and then getting mad that people are responding to what you're saying. It's so wild. It's so embarrassing. And it is a chicken's coming home to roost moment for sure, which while I don't like, I will never like, it's never enjoyable to understand how many people in our country don't believe in our elections. With that as the context, it does feel a little bit good to watch the people who made that happen be uh, punished politically and optically and in the spaces that they uh, exist kind of in the media world by their own audience. Very, very wild.